Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I decided to combine all my exam practice questions for CompTIA A plus core one in this video. Uh, I hope it will be easier for you guys. You don't have to go through all my channels. You can find all the exam practice questions I have so far for core one in this video. So I also created a Udemy course for core one and core two with practice exam questions and also a Udemy course for simulations, 20 simulations. So you can check the links in the description. I want to thank you for the support. And yeah, as you may know, I upload mostly CompTIA A plus videos, but soon I'm going to start uploading for Network Plus. So consider subscribing to my channel if you're studying for these certifications. Thank you very much. And let's get started. All right, first question. You are working on an important project on your laptop and suddenly you notice that the video on your laptop is not working. What should you first do to troubleshoot it? We have four possible answers. Toggle the video function key. Remove the display unit and reattach it. Replace the inverter or power the system off and back on. What should you do first? And I choose this answer, toggle the video function key. Let's see if it's the right one. That's the correct one. And let's go to the explanation. A helpful thing to try is toggling the video output function key, usually something like Fn plus F8. And the other options are not necessarily yet. Question number two. A technician has been assigned to upgrade the RAM in a desktop computer. Which type of RAM is the technician most likely to use to install the additional RAM? So pay attention to the questions when you are on your exam because they might be very tricky. So here uh, we have to see that they're asking us about desktop computer. So which one do you think is the correct answer? ECC, SODIM, VRAM and DDR5. The right answer here is DDR5. SODIM is a smaller form factor of memory module typically used in a laptops or compact systems. ECC, which stands for Error Correcting Code, is a type of RAM that is commonly used in servers and workstations for data integrity. And VRAM, Video RAM, is a specialized type of RAM used for graphics processing units. Therefore, DDR5 is the most likely type of RAM to be used in a desktop computer. Let's go to the question number three. You need to take inventory quickly and accurately to ensure that your stock levels are up to date. Which of the following peripherals would you most likely use? Barcode scanner, NFC device, EVM switch, or thermal printer. Which one makes more sense for you? And that is, they ask us for one answer. If they want two answers, they will specify two answers. So we choose barcode scanner, and that's the correct answer. Let's see the explanation. Barcode scanners can quickly and accurately scan the barcodes on each product, which then connects to a software system that updates the inventory levels in real time. This allows for accurate and efficient inventory management, reducing the time and effort required for manual inventory counting. This is question number four. A technician powers on a PC and its monitor and sees the following error message. No input, input signal detected. The display lights on the computer are on. Which of the following is a possible solution? So, he powers on the PC and also he powers on the monitor and sees on the monitor a message. No input signal detected. The display lights are on. Light. The display lights are on and the computer are on, so which is the possible solution. All right, checking the power plug on the PC, unplug the GPU and plug it to a PCIe generation five slot if available, changing the BIOS settings, changing the connector setting on the monitor or checking the power plug on the monitor. So, and here we have how many, three, four, five. 
And the right answer here is changing the connector setting on the monitor because okay let's see the explanation the no input signal detected error message typically indicates that the monitor is not receiving a signal from the computer therefore a possible solution is to change the connector settings on the monitor the technician should ensure that the cable connecting the monitor to the computer is securely plugged in on both ends if the cable is loose, they should reconnect it properly and check if the error message disappears. Checking the power plug on the monitor and the PC is also important to ensure that both devices are receiving power. However, if the display lights on the computer are on, it's less likely that the power issue is causing the error messaging. Changing the BIOS settings is unlikely to resolve this issue, as this error message occurs before the BIOS is loaded. Okay, we are on question five. Guys, I want to mention something. If you go to my description, you can see all my social media links. I created a new account, so please go and follow them. I also cre uh, created a backup YouTube account in just in case something happened to this account. So you can follow my second YouTube channel, which is the link is also in the description. You can subscribe it if you like so. And also I posted an Amazon link to my Amazon store where you can see uh, my uh, when I used to study for A+, I used some books, so you can go and check them out from that link, and you can buy them if you like. I might uh, it's an affiliate link, so I might get some commission if you purchase from those links. All right, so thanks a lot, and let's continue with the question number five. Documents sent to a printer are printing with abnormally wide margins. You think the paper size is incorrectly selected. Where do you go to make this change? Paper selection, switch on the printer, print queue, printing preferences, run the troubleshooter or manage sharing. So which, where you will go. And you will go on printing preferences. To change the paper size setting for printing, for printing, you should go to the printing preferences. The printing preferences can be accessed through the print dialog box or from the devices and printers section in the control panel, depending on the operating system being used. Once in the printing preferences, the paper size can be adjusted to match the size of the paper that is currently loaded in the printer. The print spooler is a service that manages print jobs and allows multiple users to share a printer. It does not provide options to change the paper size. The paper selection switch on the printer is used to physically adjust the paper guides for different paper sizes, but it does not change the printer's settings. The print queue is a list of print jobs waiting to be printed and does not provide options to change the printer's settings. Let's go to the next question. Question number six, place the correct file system against the operating system. So we having Mac OS, Mac operating system, we have Windows operating system and we have Linux. So, and we have their file systems down below. So we need to drag them to their correct place. As you can see, the easiest one is NTFC, which is for Windows. Linux uses this one X4 and Mac OS uses HFS. Let's submit and see if we are right. Yep. There's no need of explanation. You need to just know this operating system and their file systems. Okay, question number seven. A user is no longer able to browse the internet after returning from vacation. The user is able to log in and navigate to the local intranet, but not to any outside sites. A technician pings a well-known website by name, but gets no reply. The technician then pings its IP address and gets a reply. Which of the following commands will most likely resolve the issue? We have three, five CMD commands. Let's see them. IPconfig slash register DNS, 
ipconfig slash flush dns, ipconfig slash release, ipconfig slash show class id or ipconfig slash o. Guys, I have a video for all CMD commands you need to know for your exams. So uh, it should be somewhere in my channel. If you want, you can go and check it out. And the right command here is we need to flush the DNS. Based on the information provided, the issue seems to be related to DNS resolution. The fact that the technician was able to ping a website by its IP address but not by its name suggests that the DNS resolution is not working properly. Therefore, the command that is most likely to resolve the issue is ipconfig forward slash flush DNS. This command will flush the DNS resolver cache, which may contain outdated or incorrect information. By flushing the cache, the system will have to retrieve the latest DNS information from the DNS server, which should resolve the issue. I, you might have some kind of simulation on your exam about, uh, you know, troubleshooting these kind of things and to use uh, different commands. And one of them was you had to use ipconfig flush for slash flush DNS. So it's very important to know these commands, what they do. Let's go to the next question. Question number eight. A technician is tasked with setting up a new workstation for a client. The client requires that the workstation has mirrored storage using two four terabyte drives that can support one failure without data loss. Which of the following best meets these requirements? And here we have two for five possible answers. Rate minus one, rate one, rate five, rate zero, and rate 10. And the right answer, guys, here. Uh, these rates are very important for your exam. I'm sure you might have questions uh, about them. So I will make a simulation, kind of, some kind of simulation, drag and drop. Uh, so stay tuned. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. The right answer is RAID 1. Let's see the explanation. RAID 1 provides disk mirroring by creating an exact copy of the data on one drive onto the second drive. If one drive fails, the other drive can still operate without data loss. RAID 0 does not provide any redundancy or fault tolerance and only increases performance by striping data across both drives which would not meet the requirement for mirrored storage. RAID 5 can provide redundancy with one drive failure, but it requires at least three drives, which is not in line with our requirements for the question. RAID 10 provides both mirroring and striping, but it requires a minimum of four drives, which again is not in line with the requirement of using two four terabyte drives. Okay, question number nine. I don't know why here is saying one, but actually, as you can see at the bottom here, it's question nine. A technician is troubleshooting a user's computer that is not receiving a network connection. Upon inspection, the technician finds that the connection seems to be down and needs to locate the user's port on the patch panel. However, the port and patch panel are not labeled. Which of the following network tools would be best to help the technician identify the correct port? And here we have five network troubleshooting tools. Protocol analyzer, toner probe, cable certifier, multimeter or crimper. So this is mostly like network plus questions, but CompTIA A plus also focuses on ne uh, troubleshooting network, I mean the fundamentals of the network uh, tools, so it's important to know them, which tool, what does it do? And here the right answer is toner probe. A toner probe, also known as a tone generator and probe, is a network tool used to trace network cables and identify the correct port on a patch panel. The tool generates a tone that can be detected by a receiver probe, allowing the technician to locate the correct port, the correct port on the patch panel. Question number 10. After this question, we are going to have a break, guys. 
which of the DNS database records listed below returns a 128-bit IP address? A. PTR AAAA MX C name. All right, which one? And this is A for A. Let's see the explanation. Uh, an AAAA record maps a domain name to the corresponding IP version 6 address, which is a 128-bit address, for example, an AA record for techconfig.com might map to the IP version 6 address. Okay, guys, I'm not going to read all of this, but as you can see, this is an IP version 6 address. The other DNS database records, records listed in the questions are A. Address record maps a domain name to the corresponding IP version 4 address, which is a 32-bit address. MX mail exchange record specifies the mail servers responsible for accepting email messages on behalf of a domain. C named canonical name record maps an alias ali alias. I don't know if I'm spelling this correctly, excuse me guys, or nickname to the canonical name, uh, the true name of a domain. PTR pointer record maps an IP address to the corresponding host name. Reserves DNS lookup. So that's the explanation, guys. Uh, let's have a little break and we are going to continuing in a second. All right, question 11. Which of the following memory types is primarily used in laptops? SD RAM, SOLDIM, ECC, DDR3, DIM, or VRAM? This is a pretty easy question and the right answer is SOLDIM. It stands for Small Outline Dual Inline Memory Module. It's a small, smaller form factor of the DIMM Dual Inline Memory Module used in desktop computers. So DIMMs are designed for use in laptops, notebooks, and other small form factor computers. So DIMMs are available in various types, such as DDR, DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, and DDR5. Question 12. Which device retains data over the long term? CPU, RAM, SSD, GPU, or RGB? Right answer, guys, is SSD. While central processing units, CPUs, random access memory, RAM, and video cards are all essential components of a computer system. They are designed to store and process data temporarily. Once power is turned off, any data stored in these devices is lost. On the other hand, SSDs use non-volatile flash memory to store data even when there is no power. This makes them suitable for long-term data storage. Let's go to the next question, 13. You are a computer technician tasked with setting up a new desktop computer for a multinational company that frequently participates in international conferences and trade shows. The computer specifications require the maximum amount of RAM, typical CPU, GPU and storage for a business workstation. As a technician, you need to choose a power supply for this computer. Which system parameter would be the most important for you to consider when selecting the power supply? So basically here we are choosing a power supply for this computer. So what is the most important to, to have a look before buying the power supply according to, our, to the requirements of our client? Input voltage, number of SATA connectors, efficiency rating, 12V rail amperage or output voltage. So guys, the important things that you need to consider is when you take in account all this, all the CPU, the GPU, the RAM and everything, we need to know the input, the average input voltage and then to make our choice according to that. In this scenario, the most important system parameter for the technician to consider when choosing a power supply is the input voltage. This is because the computer will be used at trade shows all over the world and different countries have different input voltage standards. For example, the United States typically uses 120V 
AC power, while many other countries use 220-240V AC power. The power supply must be able to accept the input voltage available in the country where it is being used, otherwise it will not function properly or could be damaged. Alrighty guys, let me tell you again, please go to my in my description of this video, I have all my social accounts and I have a second YouTube channel, please give me a follow and subscribe, please like the video, post a comment, in this way you support my work. And let's see this question 14. Which of the following should a technician do next after reporting an incident? Go back to work, document the incident, delete the content, inform his colleagues, confiscate the PC. All right, here you don't need uh, any study materials, just use your common sense. After incident happened, what should you do? You should document the incident. Everything must be documented, so. Firstly, documenting the incident helps to create a record of what happened, which can be used for future reference. This information can be used to identify patterns and trends in incidents and as, as well as to track the effectiveness of any actions taken in response to the incident. Secondly, documenting the incident can help to ensure that appropriate action is taken. This information can be shared with relevant parties such as management, security teams or law enforcement agencies as appropriate to help determine the appropriate course of action. Okay, question 15. We have, the, I told you this video is gonna be long, so that's why I'm taking breaks a little bit. So if you want, you can pause the video, have a sip of coffee or a tea and let's get, let's keep going. You are a technical support specialist for a large corporation and you have been asked to set up a PC in a conference room for video presentations during training sessions. The PC will need to be connected to a large screen TV for displaying the video content. As a techni technical support specialist, which of the following video connectors would be the most appropriate choice for this environment? We have different type of cables here. HDMI, Thunderbolt, VGA, DVI. And here, HDMI, it's the best choice. HDMI is a digital interface that supports high definition video and multi-channel audio, making it a popular choice for connecting devices such as PCs and laptops to TVs and projectors. HDMI can transmit both video and audio signals and is capable of supporting resolutions up to 4K. While VGA, Video Graphics Array, and Digital Visual Interface, DVI, are also common video connectors, they are not as suitable for this environmental beca environment because they are analog interfaces and do not support high-definition video or audio. Thunderbolt is a high-speed data transfer interface, but it does not transmit video signals directly and would require an adapter to connect to a TV. Alright guys, please do like this video, hit the subscribe button, like I said, I'll be uploading more videos, more complicated questions to make sure that you are ready for your exam completely free. Choose the correct answer in each drop down list. So let's, when we see we have RG6, RJ45, RJ11 is used in Ethernet applications and uses all eight wires inside the cable to send and receive data. So we have, the next one is, only offers mirroring without any stripping or parity. And here we have, does a basic check of your hardware verifying CPU and memory requirements are met before loading the operating system. So, let's see, actually on each one we have a different answers. As you can see on the first question we have RG, like I, I already said those. On the second one we have RAID 1, where RAID 10, RAID 5, RAID 0. And here we have VRAM, BIOS, U, uh, UEFI and POST. So let's start with this one, the last one. This does a basic check of your hardware, verifying CPU and memory requirements are met before loading the operating system. This is POST. Okay, only offers mirroring without stripping or parity. This is RAID 1. 
I told you right, these rates are important. For CompTIA Plus, you need to know only this 5 RAID 1 rate, 5 RAID 0 rate, 10. RAID 1 only offers mirroring without any stripping or parity and is used in Ethernet applications. This is RJ45 and uses 08 wires. Let's see if we are right. Yep, all the answers are right. If some of them is wrong, it will show us that we have incorrect answers. So these are the right answers. Let's continue. Question 17. A customer claims that despite using a gigabit LAN card, their computer can never transmit data at a rate of more than 100 megabits per second. The technician discovers that the network cable needs to be changed while troubleshooting. What type of cable category is restricting the transmission speed? We have CAT 6A, CAT 7, CAT 5, CAT 5E, CAT 6. All right, this, uh, I think I'm gonna make another video simulation for this, all these cables because they are important part of CompTIA Plus exams and I'm sure you might have some questions about them on your exam. So, so the right answer is CAT 5. Okay, we have here an explanation. I mean, ignore this here. So let's read the explanation. CAT 5 cables are capable of supporting network speeds up to 100 megabits per second. Even though the customer has a gigabit LAN card, the CAT 5 cable would not be able to support the higher transfer speed of 1 gigabit. Therefore, replacing the CAT5 cable with a higher capacity category of cable would be necessary to achieve the higher transfer speeds. So, CAT5e can support up to 1 gigabit per second, while CAT6 and CAT6a can support up to 10 gigabits and 100 gigabits, respectively. So, all the cables can support higher speed higher than 100 except CAT5, that's why CAT5 is the right answer. Let's go to the next question. We have question 18. On a laptop, the screen is constantly flickering. Which of the following is most likely to be the root of this issue? Choose two answers. A failing display, a failing backlight, a failing inverter, interference from a nearby fan, a failing PCU, a failing VGA cable. So we have to choose to answer what the most likely cause would be for flickering laptop display. I choose a failing backlight and a failing inverter. Let's see. Yes, that's the right answers. A failing backlight can cause flickering on a laptop display because the backlight provides the light that illuminates the display. If the backlight is failing or malfunctioning, it can cause the display to flicker or go dark. Similarly, a failing inverter can also cause the display to flicker because the inverter converts the direct current DC power from the laptop's battery or power supply into the alternating current AC power that is needed to power the backlight. If the inverter is failing, it may not be providing a stable supply of power to the backlight, which can cause the display to flicker. Alright guys, I'm creating all these questions, guys. I'm simulation, I'm making them, so please spare time to leave a comment. Uh, I mean, like the video, subscribe. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Question 19. Choose the correct answer in each drop-down list. So the first one is one of these four can identify errors in memory and then correct them as it operates. The second one, the total capacity of the power supply is called D. We have again four answers, which are voltage rating, volt rating, input rating, output rating. Okay, one of these, Wi-Fi, NFC, IR, Bluetooth is used for contactless payments if the payment card or device is with a few centimeters of the top pay device. The first one we have RAM, page file, ECC, VRAM can identify errors in memory 
and then correct them as it operates. And this is ECC. The total capacity of the power supply is called, what it is? It's called wattage rating. Okay, NFC, guys, is used for contactless payments. And let's submit. And all the answers are correct. Yeah, we can, we see now the right answers as well. Here, ECC, wattage rating, NFC. Error coding code memory is an expensive type of memory, typically reserved for high-end systems. All right, good to know. We have, we are on question 20, guys. Choose whether the statement is true or false. When a computer hibernates, the computer shuts down after saving everything in memory on your hard disk. Is this true or is this false statement? And this is true. When your computer hibernates, it does exactly that. There is a little explanation here because some people are confused about power saving mode or hibernate. So let's read it. When a computer hibernates, the operating system saves the contents of the system's memory RAM to the hard disk and then shuts down the computer. When the computer is turned back on, it reads the saved information from the hard disk and restores the system to its previous state, allowing the user to resume working from where they left off. This is different from sleep mode, which is a power saving state where the computer goes into a low power mode while still keeping everything in a RAM and wakes up much faster than hibernation. Question 21. A technician is replacing a laptop's hard disk HDD with an SSD. Which of the following should the technician do first? Create a backup of the hard disk, upgrade the RAM on the laptop, enable SSD support at BIOS, and or install SSD drives inside the operating system. So, when you're replacing your hard disk with an SSD, it's good to create a backup of the hard disk. That's the easy one. Before replacing the hard disk with an SSD, it is important to create a backup of the hard disk to avoid losing any important data. This can be done by using a backup software or by manually copying the data to an external hard drive or cloud storage. Alright guys, I had my break, so let's keep rolling. Question 22. A network engineer is looking for a provider that will allow him to move his organization's servers, routers, firewalls, and switches to the cloud. This provider would essentially act as his organization's virtual data center. What type of cloud provider does this network engineer need to find? DAAS, PAAS, SAAS, NAAS, or IA? AS. So you need to be aware what this cloud provider means and here the right answer is infrastructure as a service. Okay, here we have a little bit of explanation which might be enough for your exam. I mean, you don't need to know so much, just the basics about them. Infrastructure as a service providers offer virtualized computing resources such as servers, storage, networking, and security services that can be used to replace or augment traditional on-premises data center infrastructure. This allows organizations to move their servers, routers, firewalls, and switches to the cloud and have them managed by the infrastructure as a service provider acting as a virtual data center. Software as a service providers offer web-based applications that are accessed through a browser or API and are not suitable for this scenario. Platform as a service providers offer a platform for building, deploy, deploying and managing applications. Network as a service providers offer network services over the internet such as VPN, bandwidth and security services. Question 23. You're working from home and have an important video conference call scheduled for later in the day. You check your video conferencing software and select your webcam, but the software is unable to open it. 
you remember that the webcam was working perfectly fine the previous day. Which of the following should be done first to address this issue so you can open your application? All right then. So what should you do first? Close other video software and retrying. Unplug the webcam and replug it. Reseat or replace the webcam. Check the driver or switch the video from the webcam to conference mode. And the right answer, guys, here is close other video software and read it. That will be the first thing to do. So if something doesn't open, you would close everything, you know, other video software and retry again. This is a good first step as having other video software open could be interfering with the webcam's functionality. Close any other video software that may be running and retry using the webcam. Okay, question number 24. You need to replace the motherboard on a desktop PC with an Intel Core i7 processor 11700K processor. Which CPU socket should the replacement motherboard have? LGA1150, LGA1200, LGA1700, LGA1366. So you need to know about PGA, LGA. So have a look at them. I'll, I will make another video simulation about this kind of thing. So I'm, like I said, just subscribe for my channel and go and check all my videos. It might help you to pass your exam. So here, the right answer guys here is LGA1200. All right, this socket type is used for the 10th and 11th generation Intel Core processors, including the Intel Core i7-11700K. And here there is explanation about the other sockets. For example, LGA1150 is used for older Intel processors, such as fourth generation. Uh, LGA1366 is older again Intel processors, such as the Intel Core i7-9 processors. And LGA1700 is not currently in use, it's expected to be used by Intel's upcoming 12th generation Alder Lake processor, which I think they're already in use. So let's go to the next question. Question 25. A user is looking to build a computer for casual gaming and wants to know if they need to purchase a separate graphics card. They are considering a CPU with an Intel Ultra High Definition Graphics 630 built-in, built-in, which built-in functionality allows the Intel UHD Graphics 630 to take over tasks normally executed by a dedicated graphics controller. VGA mode, integrated GPU, hybrid threading or multi-core architecture. And of course, the right answer is integrated GPU. An integrated GPU is a graphics processing unit that is built into the CPU itself, rather than being a separate, dedicated graphics card. In this case, the Intel graphics card is an integrated GPU that is built into the CPU. Let's go to the next question, which is, we are halfway through. Question 26. A CEO has requested that his IT department find a new accounting software. He would prefer that the accounting software doesn't need to be installed locally on his machine, since he often switches between multiple devices. He would like the program to simply be accessible via a web browser on any device while he has an internet connection. What type of software should this IT department be looking at? SAAS, PAAS, NAAS, DAAS, IAAS. I'm saying them like this, not in their full name. So do not give it for you guys. I'm sure you already know the answer. And this is software as a service. 
Software as a service is a cloud computing model where software applications are hosted on a cloud provider's servers and accessed through the internet using a web browser. With software as a service, users can access the software from any device with an internet connection without the need for local installation. Examples of software as a service are Microsoft 365, Google Workspace, etc. Question 27. One feature of virtualization is the ability to quickly add and remove resources to servers depending on your needs at the time. What is the term used to describe this? Rapid elasticity, rapid availability, resource pooling or metered service. So these services are very important, guys. You need to know all of them for your exam. And here the right answer is rapid elasticity. Elasticity in virtualization refers to the ability to dynamically adjust the computing resources such as CPU, memory, storage and network bandwidth allocated to virtual machines or containers based on the workload demands. This means that resources can be easily scaled up or down depending on the current demand, without the need for physical hardware changes. Let's go to the next question, question 28. A technician troubleshoot a projector that occasionally powers off. The technician recreates the issue and notices the, project, the projector will not power back on until approximately 10 minutes have passed. After 10 minutes of being powered on, the projector shuts off again. Which of the following should the technician perform next to resolve the issue? Replace the bulb, clean the filter, check the power cable connection or adjust the standby timeout. What do you guys think he has to do next? And he has to, I think he has to clean the filter. That's the right answer. Okay, the symptoms described in this scenario suggest that the projector may be overheating and automatically shutting off as a safety measure to prevent damage to the device. The fact that the project projector will not power back on until approximately 10-15 minutes have passed and then shuts off again after 10-15 minutes of being powered on, also supports this theory. Therefore, the next step the technician should perform to resolve the issue is to clean the filter. The filter in a projector is designed to prevent dust and debris from entering the device and blocking the airflow that cools the internal components. Over time, this filter can become clogged with dust and dirt, which can impede the airflow and cause the device to overheat. So the cleaning filter is the next thing you have to take if you experience this kind of issue. We're going to question 29. You are a technician again. You are a technician many times for different issues, but that's how you are going to learn. You are a technician who just replaced a faulty processor in a customer's computer. Before you can complete the repair, you need to add a cooling mechanism to the new processor to prevent overheating. What should you use to attach the cooling system to the processor? So this is a very easy question for guys who has already built their own PCs. So if you had that kind of experience, it's, it's very, very beneficial for you. So, be, so because you already know the answer and you know what to do you know every part where it goes what it does what cables goes in everything so i suggest you if you have some spare money just or if you need a new pc just buy all the parts by yourself and build it yourself that in that's the best way to learn stuff so we have five possible answers expansion bus heat sink super glue thermal paste or fan what is used to attach, I mean, what, what think of these five you can use to attach the cooling system to the processor? So you will use a thermal paste, guys. To attach a cooling system to a processor, it is recommended to use thermal paste or thermal compound. Thermal paste is a substance that improves heat transfer between the processor and the cooling system. It fills microscopic gaps and 
imperfections between the processor and the cooling system, allowing for better thermal conductivity and more efficient heat dissipation. It is important to apply the thermal paste properly to ensure good contact and effective heat transfer. A small amount of thermal paste should be placed on the center of the processor and then spread evenly across the surface using a plastic card or other similar tool. It is important to use the appropriate amount of thermal paste as too much or too little can affect the cooling performance. So here they are saying that you have to use a plastic card to spread the thermal paste across your all the processor. But most of the people and me specifically when I build it, I just put a little bit, maybe like the letter X or just as a dot. I mean, I didn't spread it all over the CPU. I just put a little bit as a dot. And then when you're pressing your, uh, uh, I mean, your cooling uh, fan or whatever uh, you are touching to, I mean, it will automatically spread the uh, thermal paste because it applies pressure to it. So let's go to question 30. Kate. An accountant reports that after turning on her new laptop, she received a message stating her IP address is already in use on the system. She tried going back to her old desktop, which she now only uses for email, but received the same message. The technician checks the account and sees a comment that Anne requires a special network setup to connect to the banking software. Which of the following should the technician do to resolve this issue? So, should remove the static IP configuration from the desktop, it should replace the network card in the laptop, it should set the laptop configuration to DHCP to prevent conflicts, or breach the LAN connection between the laptop and the desktop. Okay, what do you guys think? The right answer here is set the laptop configuration to DHCP. That's the correct answer answer and here is a little bit of explanation the error message ip address already in use on the system indicates that there is an ip address conflict on the network this means that another device on the network is using the same ip address as kate's laptop and desktop since kate's old desktop is only used for email it's likely that it's still configured with a static ip address which is causing the conflict the technician should remove the static IP configuration from the desktop by setting it to obtain an IP address automatically via a dynamic host configuration protocol. Okay, for the new laptop, the technician should configure the network adapter to use DHCP, which will allow it to obtain a unique IP address automatically from the network. We are going to question 31. You are in the market for a new smartphone and are comparing different models. Which type of processor is gener generally preferred for mobile devices? X64, X32, LG, A, R, I, A, R, M, X86. And guys, the right answer here is this, A, R, M, R. ARM processors are designed to be power efficient, which means that they consume less power and generate less heat compared to the other processors. This is important for mobile devices because they have smaller batteries and need to last for a longer time between charges. In addition, ARM processors are smaller in size, which allows for more efficient use of space in a mobile device design. Question 32. Which of the answers listed below refer to the characteristic features of the signal that can be carried through the VGA cable? Select two answers. What can you carry a VGA cable? Audio. Video and audio. Analog and digital. Video. Analog or digital. What do you guys think? And the right answer here is VGA course it will carry video and what is the other signal analog guys video analog okay video graphics array cable is primarily used to transmit video signals from a computer to a monitor the video signal carried through the vga cable is analog meaning that it is continuous signal that varies in voltage over time 
While it is possible to transmit audio signals through a VGA cable using a separate adapter or cable, audio is not a characteristic feature of the VGA cable itself. Question 33. Which of the following should not be connected to a UPS? Okay, that's a good question. Speakers, PCs, laser printers or monitors. P uh, UPS, what do you guys uh, think it is? It is for power supply. Interrupted power supply. So in case of something happens, it will have it will power your device. But the question is what device you should not connect to that thing. So I already said the answers. Which which do you think? What is the answer? At the right answer here is laser printers guys if you have some question in your exam about ups don't put your laser printers on ups here is an explanation ups devices are designed to provide backup power to connected devices during a power outage or brownout helping to prevent data loss and other issues caused by sudden power loss however Laser printers can consume a lot of power during operation and can overload a UPS, causing it to shut down or fail. PCs, monitors and speakers can typically be safely connected to a UPS as they consume less power than laser printers and are less likely to overload the UPS. It's important to check the capacity and specification of the UPS and the devices you want to connect to ensure that they are compatible and won't cause any issues. Okay. Question 34. A customer wants to purchase a new home desktop computer. The machine will mainly be used for internet browsing and streaming video, except on weekends when the customer will use it to play games with friends. Which of the following should the technician focus on to meet these requirements? Choose two answers. We have he should focus on high quality microphone 16 GB of DDR4 SODIMM memory, 4 core processor, 90 mm case fans, high capacity disk drive, or RAID 5. So, like I said, pay attention to the questions. Here they are stating desktop computer. So, immediately SODIMM, this one goes down because SODIMM is used in laptops. So, it will be used for internet browsing, streaming video, except on weekends, it will be using also for gaming. So, you are going to need, what do you think? High capacity disk drive, guys. Because nowadays the games, they are, they, cons they are, I mean, they're 100 GB, so you need a lot of space. And the next thing for the internet browsing, streaming video, we can, you need a four core processor. So you won't have uh, uh, slow. So, slow speed. So this is correct. A four core processor would be helpful for gaming as it can handle more demanding tasks and a high capacity hard drive is necessary for storing games, videos and other media files. Question 35. You are a technician at a company and an employee has recently been terminated. However, the employee has set a boot password and a BIOS password on their company-issued computer and you need to gain access to it. Which of the following motherboard components can you most likely use to return the computer to a state that will allow you to boot the system without knowing the, the password? So, jumper. Power reset connector, cable tester, or toggle switch. So, guys, you have to use the jumper. The jumper on the motherboard can most likely be used to return the computer to a state that will allow you to boot the system without knowing the password. A jumper is a small plastic connector that is used to short a pair of pins on a motherboard by shorting specific Pins. A jumper can be used to reset the BIOS to its default settings, including removing the boot password. To use the jumper, 
To reset the BIOS, you will need to locate the specific jumper in the motherboard and follow the instructions in the motherboard manual to short the pins. Once the jumper is removed or reset, the boot password should be removed and you should be able to boot the system. A 4 core processor will be... Oh! This is the answer for the previous question. Sorry guys, like I said, I'm making all these kind of questions, simulations, so it is likely that uh, you might see some kind of mistakes, so I apologize for that. Okay, let's go to the next question, question 36. John is a new IT support specialist at a large company. A co-worker has asked him to install a printer on their work computer. What is the next step John should take after installing the printer to make sure it is functioning properly? He should print a test page. He should set up the printer as the default printer. He should verify that the printer prints by using a web browser. He should enable duplex settings and he should restart the computer. Which one is the right answer? So I think he should first do print to print a test page. And that's the correct answer. Printing a test page ensures that the printer is properly installed, the drivers are installed correctly and the printer is able to communicate with the computer. If there are any issues such as missing drivers or connectivity problems, the test page will help to identify them. Once the test page has been printed successfully, John can assist the coworker with setting the printer as the default printer if needed. Question 37. Bob has just purchased a new cable modem and a Soho router for his home office. He needs to connect the cable modem to the Soho router to set up his network. Which cable type should Bob use to connect the cable modem to the Soho router? He should use Ethernet, he should use USB, coaxial or Thunderbolt. And this is easy question. The right cable he should use is Ethernet. Ethernet is the standard cable type used for local area networks and it is the most common type of cable used for connecting a modem to a router. It provides high-speed connectivity and it's widely available on most routers and cable modems. Thunderbolt and USB cables are not typically used for connecting modems to routers and coaxial cables are typically used for cable TV. We're going to question 38. You are setting up a wireless network for a small business office. You need to choose the appropriate channel for the wireless network. Which channel should you select for the 802.11 wireless network in the small business office? You should use channel 6, channel 24, channel 13 or channel 10. So here you need to know which channels are not interrupted. So you should use the channel 6. Channel 6 is one of the three non-overlapping yes, non channels recommended for use in the 2.4 GHz frequency band for 802.11 wireless networks. Channels 10 and 24 are also valid channels, but they may cause interference with other nearby networks. Channel 13 may not be available in some countries or regions. Not long guys, just 10-11 questions. So please guys, do subscribe, like the video, post a comment. Check my description, follow my social media accounts and my backup YouTube account. Thank you very much. Which of the following standards supports MIMO? Technology. We have four answers. 802.11a, 11n, 11g, 11b. These are important standards you need to know. You need to know their speeds as well. I'm gonna make also simulation about that so you can learn if you don't know them already. So the right answer guys here is 11n. It is a wireless networking standard that supports MIMO technology which allows for multiple streams of data to be transmitted simultaneously. This enables faster wireless speed and better signal strength in areas with interference. The 11A and 11B and 11G standards, they do not support MIMO technology. Question 40. You are upgrading the graphics card in a gaming desktop computer. You need to determine the appropriate type of expansion slot to use for a high-performance graphics card. What type of expansion slot should you use for the new graphics card in the gaming desktop computer? You should use the PCI or PCIe AGPISA. So, you guys should use 
which one do you think? And that's the right answer. The appropriate type of expansion slot to use for a high performance graphics card in a gaming desktop computer is PCIe, which stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect Express. AGP, which stands for Accelerated Graphics Port, and PCI Peripheral Component Interconnect are older types of expansion slots that are commonly used for high performance graphics cards today. Industry standard architecture is an even older type of expansion slot that is no longer used in modern computers. So this is the right answer you should use. I mean the right expansion slot you should use in your computer. I used that one when I was attaching my video card. So yep. Come on, continuing. Question 41. You have oh, yeah, oh. You have decided to upgrade the storage capacity of your desktop computer by installing a new hard drive. As you gather the necessary components and tools, you begin to wonder about the major components of a hard disk drive system. Which of the following is not one of the three major components of a hard disk drive system? Not SSD, hard disk, HDD. Which are the three main components? Which uh, on the question is they're asking us which of the following is not one of the three major components. So we have disk controller. We have hard disk, we have drive interface, we have host adapter. So this controller, yep, that's part of it. Hard disk, yep, drive interface, yep, host adapter, no. That's the correct. So as we can see, the three components, hard disk, that's the physical storage device, drive interface, that's the connection between the hard disk and the rest of the computer system, disk controller, that's the component that manages the reading and writing of the data, and from the hard disk. A host adapter, also known as a host bus adapter, is a hardware component that connects a computer system to a storage device, such as a hard disk, but is not considered one of the three major components of a hard disk drive system. All right, question 20, uh, 42, excuse me, guys. You are, guys, if you are still watching this video, thank you very much, thank you a lot. I'll be uploading more questions, more complicated questions for core one, core two, also simulations, performance-based questions for A+, plus, network+, plus. so please do subscribe, like my channel, post a comment, I really appreciate that. You are a technician working for a small IT services company, and the client has reported that their Windows CAT workstation is running slowly. The client reports that the same application runs faster on an identical workstation. You review the client's hardware configuration and find that the workstation uses a RAID 10 and has dual GPU cards. Which of the following should you perform first to troubleshoot the problem? You should clear the RAID configuration file and restart the PC. You should replace the RAID controller write cache module. You should check the event log for any cache issues, or you should replace the write cache battery. The thing that makes sense here is you should check the event log for any cache issues. By checking that, you, the technician, can identify any potential software or system issues that may be contributing to the slow performance of the CAD workstation. The event log may reveal if there are any cache issues that may be causing the slow performance. Once the technician has identified any software system issues that may be contributing to the slow performance, then they can take a further step the others to address the problem, such as updating drivers, running virus scans, or performing hardware replacements, blah, blah, blah. That's it for this question. Let's go to the question 43. As an IT technician, you have been tasked with running new network cables through the drop ceilings of an office building. You need to select the appropriate type of cable that will be used in these spaces. Which of the following types of cables is the most appropriate choice for running through drop ceilings? Okay, plenum, plenum, plenum. Category 5E, direct burial or PVC? And here, of course, the right answer is plenum. Plenum, they're specifically designed to be used in air handling spaces such as drop ceilings, where there is a high risk of fire. 
The plen plenum rate cables are made from flame resistant materials that are able to prevent the spread of fire and smoke. PVC cables are not appropriate for drop ceilings or plenum spaces because they are not fire resistant. Category 5E, they are type of twisted pair cable used for Ethernet networks, but the the type of cable used for running through the cob ceilings should not be it's not plenum rated, so they're not suitable for these places. Direct burial cables are used all outdoors where they are buried underground and are not appropriate for indoor use or for use in drop ceilings. Okay, question 44. The eSATA connector features a distinct L shape, right angled or left angled, that prevents improper insertion, insertion of the connector plug into eSATA port. Is it true or is it false? Yes, it is true. There is no explanation and there is no needed explanation for this question. So, 45. As an IT professional, you are responsible for managing email services for a company that has been experiencing an increasing number of spam messages in their email system. You have decided to implement a spam filter to reduce the number of unwanted messages. Which of the following protocol and port number combinations are commonly used by spam filters? We have SMTP, that's the name of the protocol. We have the number 443, number of protocol, name of protocol, telnet, SSH, 22, HTTPS, and file transfer, uh, FTP, I don't want to, just I wanted to mention the letters, FTP. 2025 for each of these uh, protocols there uh, it's their number so which one you will what combination you will use port number and port name protocols so you will notice you will, you will notice <laughs> i'm getting tired guys so you you will use smtp guys where is it simple mail transfer protocol uh, let's see what port numbers we have. 443, 22, no, 20. There we go. We have 25. So this is the combination. All right, let's see. Yep, that's the right. The two answers that refer to the protocol and the port number used by spam filters are SMTP and, 20, uh, and 25. They are standard protocol used for email transmission over the internet, and the port 25 is the default port. Uh, HTTPS use ports 443 and Telnet uses 23. File transfer protocol it was the other answer if I'm not uh, wrong, which is the wrong answer. We don't do, uh, we do SMTP and 25 combination. Okay, question 46. As an IT consultant, you have been hired by a small business owner to provide a solution for their employees to securely use their laptops in the office environment. The business owner wants the, um, wants the employees to be able to charge their devices, access corporate LAN resources and use a variety of removable hardware. Which of the following devices would best meet the owner's needs? A docking station, a port replicator, a power over Ethernet or a Thunderbolt. Ta -da 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 docking station, guys. A docking station provides a way for laptop users to connect their devices to the corporate LAN whilst also providing security to the laptops. Docking stations allow for a variety of removable hardware to be connected, including additional monitors, external hard drives, and other peripherals. Docking stations also typically include a charging port for the laptop, making it easy to keep the laptop charged while it is in use. Guys, stay, stay a little bit more. 47 questions. Don't exit the video. Let's finish this. As an IT technician, you have been tasked with setting up a server for a client who wants to ensure that their server does not lose power if their power supply fails. The client runs a critical application that cannot afford any downtime due to the power out outages. Which of the following best describes the type of power supply needed in this situation? Okay, we have a power supply that provides twice as much wattage than what is needed. A modular power supply. 
a power supply that provides a voltage output selector or a redundant power supply. Okay, as you can see from the uh, description of the question, we have to use a redundant power supply. This is, they are designed to provide backup power in the event that the primary power supply fails. They typically consist of two power supplies that work together to power the server with one power supply acting as a backup in case the other one fails. So you see the power supplies, they also have a redundant power supplies. There is a one power supply in the power supply. <laughs> I don't know if you get me, I get. I didn't get myself to. So, okay, this ensures that the server remains operational even if one of the power supplies fails. A power supply that provides twice as much wattage as what is needed to power the system components may be helpful for handling power spikes or surges, but it would not provide backup power in the event of power supply failure. A power supply that provides a voltage output of a selector would allow the user to adjust the voltage output of the power supply, but it would not provide backup power in the event of power supply failure. So the right answer here is a redundant power supply. Question 48. Which of the following IP addresses can be routed across the internet? Okay, you need to know a uh, different type of IP address, private, uh, A, B, C, blah, blah, blah. So let's read 127.0.0.1. 192.162.1.2.10.42.40.14.129.52.50.15 Okay, which one can be routed across the internet? And that's it is this one, guys. Let's see the explanation. The address that can be routed across the internet is this one, 129, blah, blah, blah. The IP address, this, the IP address, A, this is the first answer, which is wrong. This is a loopback address, guys, 127, that is used to test network communication between the local machine and itself. It is not routable across the internet. This address, 192, is private IP address that is used to local network and is not routable. This address is a private IP address, 10.42.40.14, that is used on local network and is not routable. Only public IP addresses can be routed across the internet. So, because as you can see, these are these two, they are private. Addresses. You need to know which are private, which are public, you know, class A and everything. The loopback addresses are pipe up, blah, blah, blah. But I uh, think you already know that. So, let's go to our 49th question. I'm getting tired, guys, of talking and reading, so uh, please forgive me if I have made any mistakes or I have annoyed you. I, for, forgive me for that. <laughs> okay, you are setting up a website for your business that involves sensitive information like user credentials and payment details. You want to ensure that the traffic to and from your website is secure and encrypted. What is the name of a network protocol that secures web traffic via SSL TLS encryption? Is it SNMP, FTPS, HTTPS, HTTP? And the right answer, guys, I'm sure you know this. It is HTTPS. This is, is, it is secure one. Okay, HTTPS, ta -ta 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 is a network protocol that encrypts and secures web traffic. It issues this secure encryption, SSL, TLS encryption, to protect sensitive information such as user credentials, payment details, and other data transmitted between a website and its users. When a user accesses an HTTPS website, their browser establishes a secure connection with the website server, which ensures that any data transmitted between the two is encrypted and protected from unauthorized access. Last question, guys. Yes, you made it. Thank you very much for the watching. Keep what if you keep till the end. Post a comment with uh, let me see what so to know which you guys have watched till the end. Post a comment uh, with uh, thumbs up emoji. Yeah. So I will know that you have stayed till the end. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, you are replacing a broken screen on a new company laptop, but you do not have repair information from the vendor. Which of the following is the best way to proceed? Replace the screen with a non-OEM, document and label the cable and screw locations, 
update the firmware on the device before repairing it, wait for the vendor to provide more information. And the right answer here is document and label the cable and screw locations. Let's see if we are right. Okay, let's continue with what's gonna happen. Oh yeah, we have explanation here. Documenting and labeling the cable and screw locations is the best way to proceed in this situation. This will help the technician keep track of which cables and screws go where, which is important for reassembly. By documenting the location, the technician can avoid mistakes and ensure that the new screen is installed correctly. Okay, let's see what is the other answer. You're replacing the screen with a non-OEM, which stands for Original Equipment Manufacturer part is not recommended. Non-OEM parts may not be compatible with a laptop which can cause further damage or even render the laptop unusable. Additionally, using non-OEM parts may avoid the manufacturer's warranty. View results. Yes, we answered 100%. All our questions were correctly answered. So let's move to the next video which includes 40 questions. First question. No input signal detected. That's the error message a technician receives after powers on his PC and its monitor. The display lights are on. Which of the following is a possible solution? A. Changing the connector setting on the monitor. B. Upgrading the monitor firmware. C. Updating the PC's operating system. D. Replacing the monitor cable. And E. Checking the power plug on the monitor. And the right answer here is A, changing the connector setting on the monitor. Explanation, as you can see, there is a picture here. Sometimes you need to change the input output configuration. The error message, no input signal detected, is a typically an indication that the monitor is not receiving a signal from the computer. There could be several causes for this, but one possible solution is to change the connector setting on the monitor. For example, the monitor may be set to receive a signal from the wrong input source, such as a different computer or device, or the connector setting may be incorrect. Changing the connector setting to the correct input source or adjusting the settings could resolve the issue. Question number two. As a technician, you have been tasked to replace DDR5 SDRAM memory. What type of packaging is used for DDR5 SDRAM? And we have five possible answers. We have A, 184 pins, B, 240 pins, C, 288 pins, D, 290 pins, or E, 298 pins. And the right answer is 288 pins. As you can see on the explanation table here, we have DDR, which has 148 pins. We have DDR2 and DDR3, which they have the same 240 pins. And the newest DDR5 and DDR4, they have the same amount of pins, 288. Here we are talking about a PC, not a laptop. If it is a laptop, it will be about so dim and the pins are different. On this picture, as you can see, there is a module key on the DDR4 here, and on the DDR5, it's around in the middle. And that is a, a difference as well. So, but in this question, it is all about the pins. And CompTIA exams, they are focusing on the pin numbers of SODIM and also on DIM. Question number three. What type of cable would you be the most cost-effective solution for resolving electromagnetic interference issues without sacrificing network performance in an office setting? We have five possible answers. Shield, CAT6, unshielded CAT5, Plenum, MMF, Coaxial. The right answer here is shielded CAT6. Shielded CAT6 cable has a higher level of shielding compared to standard CAT5e which helps to reduce EMI and maintain signal integrity. Shielded CAT6 cable is also more cost effective compared to using multi-mode fiber which is typically more expensive. As you can see UTP it is unshielded twisted pair and 
STP stands for Shielded Twisted Pair. Question number four. A user claims that the projector has video but no audio as they try to utilize it to the present in a conference room. Which of the following options will fix the problem most likely? So here we have a problem with the projector. There is no audio, but there is a video. Again, five possible answers. A, changing the outputs to VGA. B, changing the bulb. C, utilizing an HDMI connection. D, changing the input to DVIA. E, increasing the volume from the PC settings. Right answer, utilizing an HDMI connection. HDMI connection contains video and audio capabilities, therefore utilizing it will most likely fix the issue. Question 5. Which computer operation runs a boot-up check on every component? BIOS, CMOS, POST, UEFI, TPM. The right answer here is POST, P-O-S-T stands for power on self test performs a self check on the computer system during boot to determine if hardware is working as expected question six you need to install a new video card into a desktop computer which type of technology would you install a by 16 card to a usb to a pcie to a DIMM, to a DVI, or to a Thunderbolt. And of course, here the right answer is to a PCIe Express. PCIe Express expansion slots accept by 1, by 4, by 8, by 16 cards, and by 16 slot consists of 16 lanes for a total bidirectional through output of 16 gigabits. PCIe standards currently come in five different generations. PCIe 1, version 1, PCIe version 2, PCIe version 3, PCIe 4, and PCIe 5. Bandwidth doubles with each generation. As you can see on the table below, there is the bandwidth of each version, the transfer speed, the frequencies. Up here, as you can see, you can see each lanes and pins and their length of each PCIe slot. These are important, so I suggest you try to memorize them. Question 7. After security measures at the entry of the building were strengthened last week, a user was unable to enter. Users may now use their mobile devices for authentication thanks to the company's implementation of the 13.56 MHz frequency short band. For the mobile device to authenticate, which of the following must be enabled? Alright. ER. IR. Bluetooth. 5G. NFC. Biometrics. And of course, you need to enable on your device, mobile device, NFC. Near field communication operates in a frequency range centered on 13.56 MHz and offers a data transmission rate up to 424 kilobits within approximately 10 centimeters. Question 8. Which of the following cloud concepts enables clients to receive scalable services. Rapid elasticity, resource pooling, measured services, high availability or on-demand self-services. Just something to say guys, I'm sure you're going to meet this type of question on your CompTIA Plus exam, so I suggest you please try to memorize them and learn them each cloud uh, each cloud service and what they do and how they are used. Okay, let's see the right answer here is rapid elasticity. Rapid elasticity is the ability of a cloud computing system to quickly adjust the amount of resources, such as computing power and storage, 
It provides in a response to changes in demand, allowing for more efficient use of resources and cost savings. Question number 9. A new BIOS UEFI update is available. And you would would you and you would like to do the upgrade? What is the most helpful when flashing the UFI on a computer system using USB flash? So what is the most helpful thing when you do the update of the BIOS? Fast USB port, UPS, Ethernet, rate or interrupted internet? The right answer here is UPS. Since losing power during this process can be anything from inconvenience to disastrous, UPS is by far the most useful solution. Of course it is. If you lose the power, it will crush. Question number 10. Which of the following standards supports MIMO technology? A. 802.11G 802.11a, 802.11b, or 802.11n, or none of the above? Right answer is 802.11n. Excuse me, guys. 802.11n standard supports MIMO multiple in multiple out and was published in 2009. It supports speeds up to 600 megabits per second. 802.11ac and AX Wi-Fi 5 and 6 supports MUMIMO. That's not in the question. Question 11. Which motherboard component can most likely be used to return a computer to a state that will allow booting the system without knowing the boot password or access to the BIOS utility when the computer has been locked by a by dissatisfied ex-employee? Dissatisfied ex-employee. Pardon me. We have five possible answers. A. Jumper. B. Toggle switch. C. South Bridge. D. CPU socket. E. Random access memory. Right answer is jumper. Jumpers are small connectors on a motherboard that are used to configure the settings for certain components or features of the computer. They allow the user to change the behavior of the system by shorting two pins together to change the voltage or signal going to a particular component. Some common uses of jumpers include setting the CPU clock speed, configuring the system for single or dual channel memory, and clearing the BIOS settings. However, the use of jumpers vary among different motherboards, and the user should consult the motherboard manual for specific instructions. You have been tasked to replace a Dell's laptop motherboard. What type of motherboard should you replace it with? Five possible answers A. ATX B. Micro ATX C. Mini ITX D. AT E1 for the specific model. The right answer is 1 for the specific model. Laptop motherboards are typically tailored to fit the specific case. When replacing a failed board, it's crucial to obtain a motherboard that will fit. The size of the old one and the new one, the new board must be the same. Question 13. What is the component that enables the touchscreen on a mobile device to receive input? Inverter, backlight, digitizer, controller. Right answer, digitizer. Digitizer is a component of a touchscreen that converts the physical touch of a user into a digital signal that can be interpreted by device's processor. Question 14. What term describes the ability to only pay for the resources used in a cloud computing service? 
measured service, high availability, resource pooling, on-demand self-service or rapid elasticity. Again, we have this question. Like I said, it's important to know the, the cloud services. And the right answer is measured service. Measured service is a feature of cloud computing that allows for the monitoring, control and the reporting of the usage of resources. This enables the ability to pay for resources based on usage and optimize costs. This feature allows for metering and charging for the usage of cloud resources such as storage, computing and network bandwidth on a pay per pay, pay per pay use basis. This means that customers are only built for the resources they consume rather than having to invest in and maintain dedicated infrastructure. This also helps customers to keep track of their usage and costs, allowing them to make better informed decisions about their resource usage. Question 15. Which of the following is the common type of failure in a laptop hard drive? DIM failure. SMART failure, RAID failure, or BIOS failure? Right answer, SMART failure. Explanation Self-monitoring, analysis and reporting technology is a feature built into most modern hard drives that allows the drive to monitor its own health and predict potential failures. Smart failure occurs when the hard drive smart system detects a problem with the drive, such as bad sectors, high temperature, or mechanical failure. When a smart failure occurs, the hard drive will typically display an error message or generate an alert to notify the user of the issue. In some cases, the hard drive may continue to function normally, but the smart failure indicates that the drive is nearing the end of its useful life and may fail soon. It is important to back up data and replace the hard drive as soon as possible when smart failure is detected to avoid data loss. What is the part of a printer that holds and transfers toner or ink onto paper? Another important subject printers print head, fusure, drum or roller. The right answer is drum. The drum in a laser printer is a cylindrical component that plays a crucial role in the printing process. Its main purpose is to transfer the toner from the from the toner cartridge into the paper to create the printed image. It is coated with a photoconductive material that is sensitive to light. The laser beam directed onto the drum creates a static charge on the photoconductive surface which attracts the toner particles and transfers them onto the paper. The drum is a crucial component of the laser printing process and must be replaced periodically to ensure optimal print quality and maintain the integrity of the printed image. Question 17. In an office setting, you have been asked to set up a new laser printer to print on both sides of the paper. How would you accomplish this task? You install the most recent firmware upgrade available for that specific printer. You will manually flip the paper over and feed it back through the printer for the second side to be printed on. You will configure duplex, duplex settings or use a duplex printing accessory that automatically prints on both sides. Or you will print the first side and then use a copy machine to print on the other side. And of course the right answer is configuring duplex settings. In a professional office setting, the most efficient and cost-effective way to set up a laser printer to print on both sides of the paper is by using a duplex printing accessory. This accessory is designed to automatically print on both sides of the paper, eliminating the need for manual flipping or using a separate machine. The duplex printing accessory can be purchased as an add-on to the printer or it can be built in with the printer, thus selecting option A and B are not the best solution. Question 18. 
In a RAID 5 configuration, what is the minimum number of hard drives required to provide data redundancy and fault tolerance? 2. Hard drives. 3, 4 or 5. And the right answer is 3. RAID 5 requires a minimum of 3 hard drives to provide data redundancy and fault tolerance. The RAID 5 configuration uses data stripping, distributing data across multiple drives in combination with an additional drive that stores parity information. This allows for data recovery in the event of a single drive failure, as the parity information can be used to rebuild the lost data. With only two hard drives, it's not possible to have any redundancy or fault tolerance as there is no drive to store parity information. More than three hard drives can be used in a RAID 5 configuration, but the minimum number required is three. Question 90. What is the main purpose of a firmware update on a mobile device? A. To improve battery life. B. To increase storage capacity. C. To fix bugs and security vulnerabilities. D. To enhance performance. Right answer is C, to fix box and security vulnerabilities. A firmware update on a mobile device is designed to fix box and security vulnerabilities that have been discovered in the current firmware version. These updates can also improve the overall performance of the device by addressing issues such as low performance, connectivity problems and other software related issues. Additionally, firmware updates often include new features, functionality and improvements to the device operating system. While a firmware update may also improve battery life, it is not the primary purpose of the update. Upgrades to storage capacity and performance enhancement are not typically done through firmware updates, but rather through hardware upgrades or cloud services. Question 20. What type of the connector is commonly used to connect a hard drive to the motherboard of a desktop computer? A. SATA B. PATA C. SCSI D. IDE Right answer is SATA Serial Advanced Technology Attachment is the most common type of connector used to connect a hard drive to the motherboard of a desktop computer. SATA uses a serial signaling technology and a smaller, more efficient connector than PATA, which is an older technology. Small computer system interface, SCSI and IDI integrated drive electronics are older technologies that were commonly used in the past, but now have been largely replaced by SATA in most new computers. Question 21. What is the purpose of a BIOS, basic input-output system in a computer? To manage system resources and provide an interface for the operating system. B. To manage the power management of the computer. C. To provide a graphical user interface for the computer. Or D. To perform diagnostic tests on the computer's hardware. And the right answer here is A, to manage system resources and provide an interface for the operating system. A BIOS is firmware that resides on a chip on the motherboard of a computer. Its primary function is to manage system resources such as the CPU, memory and peripheral devices and provide an interface for the operating system to communicate with the hardware. The BIOS also controls the boot process, performing a power on self test post, to ensure that all hardware is present and functional, and then loading the operating system from the boot device. Power management is a feature that can be configured in the BIOS, but it's not the main purpose of it. The BIOS doesn't provide a graphical user interface and it's not a diagnostic tool. Question 22. A user reports that their computer is running slow and freezing frequently. As a technician, what would be your first step in troubleshooting the issue? 
A. Run a malware scan. B. Check the available free space on the hard drive. C. Check the computer's event viewer logs. Or D. Update the computer's operating system. Right answer here is check the available free space on the hard drive. Slow performance and freezing can be caused by a variety of issues, but one common cause is a lack of free space on the hard drive. When a hard drive is full, the computer has to work harder to access and store files, which can slow down overall performance. The first step in troubleshooting this issue should be to check the available free space on the hard drive and remove any unnecessary files or programs. Question 23. What should a user verify is present on their PC before purchasing an NVMe hard drive as an upgrade? What should you have on your PC before you buying that hard drive? So DIM, SATA, Jumper, M.2, Skizzy. And of course the right answer here is M.2. Before purchasing an NVMe drive, the user should confirm that the PC has an available M.2 interface. NVMe drives are designed to use the non-volatile Memory Express protocol, which is optimized for high-speed storage communication. NVMe drives are typically installed in an M.2 interface on the motherboard, so it's important to confirm that the PC has this type of interface available. Question 24. What is the most probable cause of a hard drive error message on a laptop even after a successful file system check and all files being accessible? Virus infection, smart status failure, RAID failure or DIM failure? And we have the right answer, smart status failure. This is self-monitoring, analysis and reporting technology. It is a feature in hard drives that monitors the drive's performance and predicts potential failures. When a hard drive is experiencing issues that may lead to a failure, it will usually report a smart status failure, which can be viewed in the PC's BIOS or through software utilities. If a file system check shows that the files are accessible and the file system is clean, but the PC still issues a hard drive error message, it's most likely that the hard drive is reporting a smart status failure. Question 25. A technician is troubleshooting what appears to be a RAM issue on a PC. Which of the following symptoms would indicate if this is a RAM issue? A. Wrong BIOS time. B. Distended capacitors. C. post called beeps. Or D. Continuous reboots. Right answer here is D. Continuous reboots. Continuous reboots is one of the most common symptoms of a RAM issue. When a computer's RAM is faulty or not functional, functioning properly, the operating system may become unstable and the computer may crash or restart frequently, leading to a continuous reboot. This can occur because the RAM stores data temporarily for the process to access and when the RAM is not functioning properly, the processor may not be able to access the necessary data to continue it running. This can lead to crashes or freezes, which, it, which in turn can cause the computer to restart. Question 26. Which of the following units is used to measure TDP? A. Amps B. Volts C. Watts D. Ohms And the right answer is C. Watts. Thermal Design Power TDP is a measure of the maximum power a computer's cooling system needs to remove to keep the computer working properly and prevent overheating. It is measured in units of power, specifically in watts. A watt is a unit of power that tells you how much energy is being used per second. So TDP is basically a measure of the highest amount of energy a computer's cooling system must handle to keep the computer working smoothly. Question 27. 
which of the following storage devices loses its contents when you shut down the computer? Hard disk, HDD, SSD, RAM or USB? And of course the right answer is RAM. Random access memory is a type of computer memory that is used to store data temporarily for a quick access and processing by the CPU. Unlike permanent storage devices such as hard drives or flash drives, the contents of RAM are lost when the power is turned off or the computer is shut down. This is because RAM is volatile memory, meaning it requires a constant power source to maintain its content. The purpose of RAM is to provide the CPU with quick access to frequently used data and applications, allowing the computer to run smoothly and efficiently. Question 28. Which of the following is a type of printer that uses heat to transfer ink onto the paper? We have a different type of printers here. Dot matrix, laser, thermo, inkjet. And of course this is thermo printer. Because it uses heat to transfer ink onto paper. It works by using a thermo print head to heat up special heat sensitive paper. The heat causes a chemical reaction in the ink that makes it turn into a solid form which creates a printed image on the paper. This type of printer is commonly used in point of sale POS systems, barcode printing and other applications where speed and reliability are important. Unlike inkjet or laser printers, thermal printers do not require ink cartridges, toner or ribbons making them a cost-effective and low-maintenance option for certain printing needs. Question 29. What part of a printer is most likely to cause smudged printing? Again, guys, it's very important to know the printer's issues and how to troubleshoot them, especially the print outputs, what can cause them. In this case, we have smudged printing. What part of the printer is most likely to cause smudged printing? A. Rollers, lo rollers B. Print head C. Ink cartridges or D. Paper tray Right answer, rollers. Printers use a series of rollers to transport paper through the printing process. These rollers are responsible for feeding the paper into the printer aligning it correctly and holding it in place while the print head applies ink to the page. If the rollers become dirty or worn, they can cause smudges on the paper. Dirt and debris can accumulate on the rollers over time, leading to smears and smudges on the printed pages. Additionally, if the rollers are not properly lubricated, they can start to wear down and create friction, which can also cause smudging. To prevent smudging, it is important to regularly clean and maintain the rollers, rollers in your printer to ensure that they are working properly and free of dirt and debris. Question 31. Which of the following is not a typical print configuration setting on printers or multifunctional devices? We have five possible answers. A number of copies, P, B, page orientation, C, paper size, D, collating, or E, choosing a cover page. And of course, choosing a cover page is not a typical print setting that you can find on a printers. Choosing a cover page is not a typical print configuration setting for a printer or multifunction device because it is typically a feature of the software application that is used to create and print the document. For example, when creating a document in Microsoft Word, you may have the option to add a cover page as the first page of your document. However, this is not a setting that is specific to the printer or multifunctional device and is instead determined by the software application being used to create the document. Question 32. 
Your computer has been experiencing frequent stop errors and is automatically rebooting each time. You want to change the configuration setting to stop this from happening. Where would you go to make this change? A. You would go to BIOS, boot tab, then automatic reboot. B. System properties, advanced tab, startup and recovery. C. Control panel, device manager and then system configuration. User accounts, advanced user accounts and then system configuration. Where would you go to make this change? And you would go to you would go to System Properties, Advanced Tab, Startup and Recovery. This option allows you to access the startup and the recovery settings and make changes to the configuration to prevent the system from automatically rebooting in the event of a stop error. Question 33. Computers on a network cannot establish an internet connection, but they can connect to each other. You determine that on each computer an APIPA address has been assigned. Where do you look next to resolve the problem? You would look to the DNS server, or to the proxy server, or you would look on the DHCP server, or to the FTP server. Of course, the right answer here is DHCP server. The right answer is DHCP server because the dynamic host configuration protocol server is responsible for assigning IP addresses to devices on a network. If the DHCP server is not functioning properly, the devices on the network will not receive valid IP addresses and they will instead be assigned automatic private IP addressing addresses and this can result in the devices being unable to connect to the internet because they do not have valid IP addresses but able to connect to each other. Question 34. You have been tasked with setting up a specialized computer for video editing. Which of the following should you include with the computer? NIC, NAS, SSD or HDDD? And of course, the right answer here is SSD. States for solid state drives, they are right answer for video editing computer because they are faster. They are faster than hard disk. They have faster read and write speeds compared to traditional hard disk. In a video editing setup, you need fast storage to handle the high speed transfer of large video files as well as to improve overall system performance and reduce lag and waiting times. SSDs are more reliable, durable and consume less power compared to hard disks, which makes them more suitable for video editing. Question 35. An unexpected clicking noise occurs every time the video editing program is started. The case fans have been replaced, but the noise remains. Diagnostics have also been run on the video card and it appears to be operating normally. What action should you take first? You should perform a backup, replace the storage drive, update the drive or perform system restore. The right answer is perform a backup. The unexpected clicking noise could indicate a problem with the hard drive, such as failing disk or a disk that has bad sectors which could cause performance issues and data loss. Before replacing the hard drive, it is recommended to perform a full data backup to ensure the data is safe. Question 36. When running cable through drop ceilings, which type of cable is best option? CAT5E, CAT6A, Plenum or Fiverr? Know your cables guys, they're important. And that's the Plenum. This, is, uh, all, this cable is often considered the best option for running through ceilings because it is fire resistant and has low smoke emitting properties. 
This type of cable is designed to meet specific safety standards and it's required by building codes in many areas for use in air handling spaces such as plenums, ducts and other spaces used for environmental air handling. The use of plenum cable helps to minimize the spread of fire and smoke in the event of a fire, providing additional safety for building occupants. Question 37. You need to attach an RJ45 plug to the end of a twisted pair cable. Which tool should you use? Cable tester, B. Crimper, C. Multimeter, or D. Tone and probe kit. Right answer is B. Crimper, of course. This is how the crimper looks like. A crimper is the tool you, will, you would use to attach an RJ45 plug to the end of a twisted pair cable because it is designed to compress and secure the connector onto the cable. The crimper is used to apply pressure to the connector and the wires within the cable which creates a physical and electrical connection. This connection ensures that the data transmitted over the cable is secure and free from interference. The crimper tool is specifically designed to work with the RJ45 connector and it is essential for creating a reliable and long-lasting connection. Question 38. A client approaches you with a problem. They have noticing vertical streaks on every page they print from the laser printer in their department. What could be the cause of this issue? out-of-date printer driver, or clogged paper tray, or might be overheated printer fuser unit, or damaging to the imaging drum. And the right answer here is damaging to the imaging drum. The imaging drum is a critical component of a laser printer that is responsible for transferring the toner onto the paper if the imaging drum is damaged, it can cause vertical streaks to, the, streaks to appear on every page that is printed. The streaks are a result of the toner not being evenly distributed on the paper, which is usually caused by scratches, dents or other types of damage to the surface of the drum. Repairing or replacing the damaged imaging drum is typically necessary to resolve this issue and restore proper printing quality. Question 39. Which of the following print tools is used to manage and maintain print jobs? So we, here we have four options. We have print head, print spooler, acrobat reader, paper feed, rollers. So which of these maintain print jobs, managing and maintaining the printing jobs? And of course, that's the print spooler. The print spooler is used to manage and maintain print jobs because it acts as a buffer between the computer and the printer. The spooler holds the print job in memory until the printer is ready to process it, which helps to ensure that the print job is executed in the correct order and without any interruptions. The print spooler also keeps track of the status of each print job and provides feedback to the computer such as when the print job is complete or if there are any errors. In addition, the spooler can be used to pause, resume or cancel print jobs allowing for greater control and management of the printing process. Overall, the print spooler is an essential tool to ensuring that print jobs are executed efficiently and without any problems. Last question for today's exam practice. Question 40. Your system has begun shutting down suddenly and unexpectedly. How can you determine if the cause of your issue is due to CPU overheating? How could you do that? By checking the CPU temperature in the, in the system BIOS firmware, or by checking the CPU documentation for normal temperatures, or you have to check the CPU temperature in computer management, or check the CPU temperatures in the task manager. The right answer here is check the CPU temperature in the system BIOS firmware. The BIOS firmware is responsible for low-level system operations, including monitoring the temperature of the CPU. 
When the CPU temperature reaches a certain threshold, the BIOS firmware can trigger a system shutdown to prevent damage to the CPU and other components. By checking the CPU temperature in the BIOS UFI firmware, you can determine if the cause of the unexpected shutdowns is due to overheating and take appropriate actions such as cleaning the interior of your computer, improving airflow or replacing thermal paste. That's it guys for today, thank you for watching, I'll be making more practice exam questions, more simulations for CompTIA A+, Network Plus, so please do subscribe, I appreciate you if you click the like button because these videos they take time and I will appreciate your support by subscribing, liking the video or and posting a comment. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, take care, bye.